From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on a dead day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stubbly block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but merely the things of men. Listen, guys, it is me here with a message of the kingdom of heaven. Guys, this is actually version two, not part two. It's actually version two of what I was speaking about because I was speaking uh, about the fact that when you uh, are a Christian, the word of God should be the final say in your life. You understand? You should lose and it must win. And previously, I quoted from uh, Matthew, Matthew 18, you know, where Jesus was saying that, truly I tell you that unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You see, guys, Jesus, that one person who is the perfect, best example of a good child, because this is a child, no matter how sad he is of what his parent is saying, no matter how bad he feels about what the parent is is actually instructing him to do, he will do it. Why? Because he's a child. See, guys, when you've got a child, you tell them to do things, they become angry, and you can see it in their face, them, they're angry. But if that child is still a child, they will do what you say to them. If the child is still a child, even though they are angry, they will do what you are telling them to do because that is a child. A child does that. A child, guys, it doesn't mean that he, it is a person who's going to feel happy about you saying this because a child doesn't understand why you are telling them to not do this or to do this. You understand? Now, I've always said that Jesus is a, uh, a is a son of man, meaning he is God at the same time he's put in the flesh. So we can never really, really fathom the makeup of Jesus because he is a child, a God child, nevertheless, a God, nevertheless, but a child, you understand? So daddy, daddy's fullness was in Jesus, is in Jesus. So Jesus understood a lot of things, knew a lot of things. But guys, you see, that old grandpa was put in Mary's womb. We don't know how he reasoned as a two-month-old. I don't know, guys, if you get what I'm trying to say. We don't know how he reasoned as a five-year-old. We don't know how he reasoned as a 12-year-old. You understand? We, we, we all know that he was separate, different, uh, different from us because he was born spiritually alive because he was put in that wound, uh, in that womb, spiritually alive. You understand? Whereas with me and you, it's different because Adam killed us. You understand? Adam was put in that flesh, but he died spiritually. You understand? Jesus, an old grandpa, is put in a woman's womb, but spiritually alive. You understand? So I was born spiritually dead, but Jesus is the only one who was born spiritually alive. So he had the Holy Spirit from birth. So the Holy Spirit obviously might have, must have been communicating, you understand, with him, rebuking him, you understand, you know, telling him, nowhere are we told that Jesus made a mistake some way. Now, we, we often hear people saying that, oh, Jesus also made mistakes. Where did they get that? Where? Do not assume things that are not even close to what is written. As I said, we can never really fathom the makeup of Jesus because it's a grandpa put in that womb. And he is a two-month-old, a five-year-old, a 12-year-old, you understand? So obviously, we don't know how daddy dealt with him. I don't know, guys, if you, if you guess what I'm trying to say. So people tend to say, Jesus also made mistakes as if Jesus also was busy doing the things we are doing here. So so that it will not seem as if we are the only ones who are bad. We are. Unfortunately, we are. We who came from Adam, we are. If you came from Adam, you are bad like me. Or you are bad as me. Simple as that. Simple meeting agent. Case closed. You understand? Jesus is not, we are not going to count Jesus in that because he was never put in Adam. He was not put in Adam. Meaning like he did not come from Adam. I came from Adam. Jesus didn't. 
an old grandpa was put in Mary's womb. So he was different. You understand? Now, he is the perfect example because it says that he fought against sin to the point of shedding blood, meaning he never sinned. Even Paul, you know, Paul comes and says, we have the high priest who's never sinned. You understand? Who was tempted as we are, but never sinned. That should tell you something. You see, guys, if you decide to go about claiming things about Jesus, find out if they are even close to what is written in the word about him. Because we're not going to listen to you. You're not going to listen to me. We listen to the word. Simple. It's simple, guys. You understand? So here, guys, Jesus, you know, previously we quoted from the scripture because Jesus, guys, is the perfect example of a child who listened to the father. You understand? And the child doesn't understand. You know, guys, you've got children, you know. I actually have nephews and nieces, you understand? And sometimes you tell them, do this, do this, and they don't understand, you understand? But sometimes you tell them to do things for their sake, not for your sake. You understand? I tell them to do things for their sake, not for my sake. You understand? But they don't understand and they don't even want to do it. You know, but because they are still children, they do it nevertheless. With those angry faces, oh, they can be angry. <laughs> Sometimes they do it crying, you know. But as, a, as an elder, you sit and you like, mm, this one is still a child. <laughs> And after you hit them, they come to you and hug you. They still want you to be the one comforting them. And you sit and you're like, yeah, a child. Guys, you look at Jesus. He's, guys, he, uh, guys, right there, you know, in the cross, he's crying to daddy. Right there in the cross, he's crying to daddy. I sit and I'm like, yo, my king, a 33-year-old daddy, is still behaving like a child. Ah, guys, my lord, I love that dude, you know. That, that guy, guys... He fascinates me. You know what I mean? But here, guys, I, I, I quoted from here because Jesus was rebuking, you know, Peter. He was rebuking the disciples. You understand? There was a time he was washing their feet. And Peter says, you ain't doing it to me. Jesus says, if I don't do it to you, I will kick you out. Jesus had to threaten Peter in order for him to wash his feet because he wanted to tell Peter, listen, learn. I'm here for you to learn from me. You know what I mean? So here he's doing the same thing. He's threatening Peter. He's shouting at Peter and he's saying, get, get behind me, Satan. You understand? You know, so it's things like that. You know, I was actually speaking about a fact that if you call yourself a Christian, if you claim to be a Christian, the word of God will be your last say you understand will be actually your final say you understand because jesus shouts i remember guys back then i had this friend and she was still uh, a baby christian and i was telling her because i i had planned to do something so later i changed and she was like why have you changed I said no hey my Lord was shouting at me. And so I was like, shut Jesus, shout, you know, because I've always been like that with Jesus, you understand? Our relationship has always been like that, you understand? I know him as a shouter, you know? So the person was like, shut Jesus, shout, yes, yes, he shout, you know? And sometimes people don't want to hear that because we want to tell Jesus we want to be the ones who come and tell Jesus things. Said, oh, no, I prayed about it. Meaning you actually told Jesus. You don't tell Jesus. That is not a man you tell. You understand? You may tell him, but afterward, he, he, he will respond. If you belong to him, he will respond. Guys, and I bet he will tell you exactly what you don't want to hear. That's how I know Jesus. He will tell you exactly what you don't want to hear. You understand? Now, I was making the example, you know, of a wife and the, and, the, and the husband. And I was saying that if your husband is telling you to do something and you don't want to do it, you know. So if your husband, guys, is under Jesus, meaning that after being saved, uh, he obeys Jesus. When he's doing wrong things, because, guys, no one is perfect. Jesus is always shouting at me because I'm not perfect. That's how I learned them. I'm really not perfect, you know. Because, you know, even at that time, wow. When I was still going to church, you know, seeing people, you know, going to church, doing things left, right and center, things that have been rebuked, you know, against, you know, people are busy doing them. And in my mind, I was like, am I serving a different God? A God who's only shouting at me. And sometimes I'll be like, my Lord, am I the only one who's wrong? Everyone is doing 
anything they want to do, you know, and they don't care about what you say, you know, and later it's clicked that oh jesus is no longer there because when jesus is no longer there he can't shout he can't rebuke that's why he says that when he comes you know he will reprimand you know when he comes meaning the holy spirit jesus will now reprimand through the holy spirit you understand so i was shocked what is going on do pastors still have jesus uh, do people who go to church still have Jesus? Why are they doing these things? Why am I the only one who's rebuked? You understand? Are we serving uh, the same dude here? You understand? Because you see, guys, no one is perfect. I'm not perfect. That's how I learned that I'm not perfect. And I became so happy because for me, it's like, finally, I found someone who can tame me. Because, guys, I'm free-spirited. Go to anyone who's free-spirited. You can't tame such a person. I'm exactly like that. You understand? So, when you know that you are clumsy, I'm even clumsy. And clumsiness and mistakes, they go together. They are twins. You understand? So, far, guys, finding someone like Jesus who rebukes, I sit and I'm like, yeah, thank you, my Lord. Because I've got someone who, you know, who can hold my horses i don't know guys if you understand i don't know guys if you get what i'm trying to say so if you marry someone who's under jesus meaning a person after being saved obeys jesus because the person who gets saved and doesn't obey that person is fooling you they think you are bobo the fool you understand but a person who belongs to jesus a person who's under jesus a person who's under Jesus' authority is someone who will make mistakes and jesus will rebuke and the person will correct the mere fact that this person is continuing with this thing that should tell you that jesus is no longer there where is he because if jesus is there or if jesus was there jesus will rebuke through the holy spirit you understand therefore jesus's word will be the final say why a child if you are a child daddy's word is the final say as i said guys the head of christ is god the head of men is woman i mean the head of men is Christ and the head of women is men. You understand? So if you decide to marry an overgrown nonsense, meaning something that is not saved and after that doesn't obey Jesus, because if it's not saved, obviously it can't obey Jesus. Obviously you are married to a, an overgrown nonsense. And when it starts dealing with you, it's not a matter of, who, of if, it's a matter of when it starts dealing with you. You have no, guys, you have no one to report that thing to. But if that thing decide to get saved you will be lucky because the, uh, that person now will now be belonging to jesus and submitting under jesus when he makes mistakes jesus is there to rebuke you understand guys we've got parents as well we've got parents as well you know and if our parents are not saved it's a pity so if a woman you're not yet married you are under jesus you understand he rebukes he still speaks guys he's not mute i always said tell you that he's not mute and he's using exactly the word you understand so if guys you know we've got parents and our parents are going to church but guys churches have the guys churches have their own beliefs you know so when you decide to enter the kingdom of heaven now meaning you are going to obey jesus no, not just church beliefs i don't care about church beliefs but jesus you understand it's a pity because your parents will tell you to do this and ah guys paul, paul says obey your parents in the lord you understand he says in the lord you understand because they want you to do what they say but paul finishes that sentence he says obey your parents in the lord you understand meaning a parent who obeys jesus because being saved means that you are going to obey jesus otherwise you're making people bobo the fools you understand not everyone is bobo the fool you understand so that's what i'm trying to say that the word of god guys will be your final say even if it's your family members guys your colleagues your friend your bosom friends you understand the word of God will be your final uh, say, your final word. Why? The word must win, you must lose. The word must win, you must lose. If Guys, if you win, there's something wrong. In fact, you are not a Christian. If you win over the word, there's something wrong. You're not a Christian because you must always lose. And the word must win. Because if the word wins, it means Jesus is winning. It's meaning, guys, it means that it's daily winning. It's one way ticket. Guys, one way authority, daddy, Jesus, husband, and the wife. You understand? Thank you. Until next.